some say I'm brutally honest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, I, I'm kind of in my own world, like, you know what I mean? So sometimes when I say things, it uh, rubs people the right way. Sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. But I always tell them, you don't got to follow me. What's going on? I'm Mia Bell and BET Talks welcomes the co-founder of the most legendary group in hip hop. I'm talking about the locks, of course. Entrepreneur, what else? Health guru, plant-based pusher. <laughs> he goes by the name of Styles P and he's sitting in the chair right now. How you feel? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, Quinn, I'm good. I can't, I'm great, I woke up. Really good because you're sitting here, of course. Thank the you. legend. Thank you very much. Did you get your workout in this morning? Yes, I did. Let me tell you something. Seeing you on the gram, getting it in. Yeah. All the time. I got lazy in the past uh, year and some change. So I had to pull it back together and say, let me get back on one, two, and just be super focused. And, yeah. Uh, the older you get it, in all actuality, not, I'm vintage. I'm not getting old. I'm getting vintage. I love vintage. Come uh, on. But uh, <laughs> say when you injure something and you wait around, it seems like something else breaks down or something else breaks down. So I just put my mind forward and say, I'm just keep pushing and keep pushing and uh, get my get myself lined back up correctly. Right, of course. Yeah. Now, in all your days, with all the life that you've lived, would you ever think then that you'd be in this space now with just such a healthy kick behind you where you are so focused on really, you know, yourself, your yeah. body, the mm-hmm. inner? Uh, no. No? No. Mm-hmm. And uh, the journey just happen to fall in place and right. uh, you know uh, fortunate enough it is hip hop that got me there because when you when you make music and you're able to live a more affluent lifestyle and move to better neighborhoods and you get to see the differences than from the neighborhood you originate from so that made right. me passionate uh, one to take care of myself and my family and my loved ones around me but then also to extend it to my community because it's uh we don't put our, we don't look at our health as our wealth enough. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It really, uh, you can't enjoy nothing if you're not in good health. Right. You have all the money in the world, but if you're in bad health, uh, you won't get to enjoy it. Exactly. And even with having all the money in the world too, I think coming from our community, sometimes we don't even know what to do with it in that sense. Yeah. And it makes me curious to know when it really kicked in for you, where you were like, hold on. I think I need to make a better choice when it comes to what I'm eating, how I'm sleeping, everything. Because hip hop is a whole nother ball game. (laughs) Definitely. I would say uh, really after my my, uh, first album, because I happened to be in a county pen for the album. Mm -hmm. And being in a county pen, I I, I stepped on the scale. I was 240 pounds. Wow. Uh, I can't even and, see that on you. Yeah, and it was just, uh, I know I had to make, it's not like I wore it very bad, mm-hmm. but it just w- wasn't healthy. Right. And, um, you know, at that point I became, um, when I, I became a vegetarian pretty much in there. Mm-hmm. So I didn't eat the trays and just was like, we eat oatmeal, fruits, right? Um, things of that nature. And then when I got out, I was like, I'm not gonna eat chicken anymore. I already didn't eat red meat before I went in. and. Um, I quit red meat my first year on Bad Boy, I would say. Oh, wow. Um, so then I was like, you know, I'm gonna be a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. And then from 03 to 13, I was a vegetarian. I really became plant-based by a total mistake. Mm. Um, as I said, I was vegetarian, but every Thanksgiving I ate with my family. Uh-huh. Like, you ate everything. I ate, yeah, you know what I mean? The uh-huh. mac and cheese, the yibs, the turkey, all that. Mm. Thanksgiving at 13, I didn't feel good after I ate. Mm. So it was like, uh, you know, I just wasn't feeling great. Mm-hmm. And then I decided for, on New Year's Eve, that uh, I would do a three-week cleanse. Right. And uh, this New Year's is 10, 10 years later. I just never went back. Wow. I just kind of... So I didn't plan to be plant based. I just went to go, went on a cleanse and just never went back. I felt so much better. Like you know, um, I had post nasal drip, cyanitis, eczema, mm. and just a host of issues. Right, and, and these are things that a lot of black people yeah, suffer from. Yeah, and it just kind of 
disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then um naturally. Just, naturally. Mm -hmm. And then on on top of more so than for health reasons, because mm -hmm. people always think it's health. For me it was really uh even to this day it's more uh, spiritual or anything. Mm -hmm. Like it's just my it Your works energy. better for my vibration to just, you know, be off of fruits and plants. Absolutely. And my energy, so that kind of works for me in that way. It gets rid of the attitude, right? Yeah. Had you and came in? I had a whole attitude. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a... I mean, I had a great attitude, too. <laughs> but I also but had depending all, on the day. Depending on the day of mm -hmm. who I'm around. Like, you know what I mean? That would pretty much dictate which way I'm going to be. And, um... This lifestyle gets makes me dictate how I want to be all the time. I, I, I choose to be on a positive vibe right. most, most of the time. Yeah, and you're spreading that awareness yeah. everywhere. You're amplifying it with everything that you do. I mean, yeah. Juices for Life, Farm for Life, you have everything Yeah. at the palm of the community's hands for yeah. them to really get into it. Yeah. Now, what about your family? Are you like the guy who's putting everybody on to what to eat and how to I mean, take care of I, th I think stuff? naturally when you... Uh, <laughs> Your first, I, I would say the first years of, I, I don't say I'm a vegan, I say I'm plant-based because... Tell us the difference, because a lot of people don't know, including well, myself sometimes. Well, <laughs> vegans fight more for the rights of animals. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe in fighting for the rights of animals, but I still wear leather. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not as graceful and gracious as Dick Gregory yet. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so I focus more on equality for mm -hmm. human beings. Then I'll go fight for the animals. I think vegans fight more for the animals. Right. And, you know, what's going on in, uh, with the animal's life. And mm -hmm. I believe in that too, but uh, I don't think we have enough equality as human beings right. yet. So as black I'm not folk. that graceful yet. I'm, I, I'll get there one day, hopefully. Mm, we gotta fight yeah. our battles first, yeah. like you said. Yeah, <laughs> you know, cause I respect like, uh, I'm, I'm cool with some folk at PETA. I'm cool with some folk at the Humane Society. Mm. But they know not to throw I, the paint over here. Yeah, they ain't gonna throw no paint at ghosts. <laughs> but also, it's like, I think more people would pay attention to animals' rights if the people who was paying attention to animals' rights also spread the word on what was happening with other humans. That's so, right. So, you know, sometimes as a person of color, you, when you think about it, just think about it. Like, uh, the difference between me, you, and somebody white is really our, our skin color and mm -hmm. some parts of our DNA, but two eyes, two ears, one, one mouth, one right. nose, 10 fingers, 10 toes. But some people have more empathy and sympathy and compassion for an animal than to someone who has more things in common with them. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully one day we get to the equality amongst human beings and, um, but I believe a plant-based lifestyle gets there. Yeah, I think so too. Place part in getting us there because the common denominator for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. for me especially with a lot of, uh, especially my, my white friends that I met in all kind of places, the common denominator was weed. Really? Yeah, like weed is a plant that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you don't, if you, I smoke, you smoke, and right. it's like, I don't care where you're from. We got things One in common thing in common, right? Pothead, but plant, <laughs> A plant-based lifestyle does the same thing because you're in the supermarket with all sort of walks from life. So I'm speaking to the old white lady, mm. old Asian man, old black folks, young Latin person, yeah. and we, you know, it's how is that cilantro smelling? But them avocados <laughs> look like you just Come have on. conversations with people who you normally wouldn't have a conversation with. So yeah, I believe that lifestyle is a common denominator to bring, to bring unity. With, for people also. I think so too. And, you know, you say that, and I also hear it from the streets where, you know, DJ E Styles, one of my brothers in music, he was, he had a cold and he was like, man, I gotta hit Styles P and I gotta go yeah. get my vitamins and do all this. And he did just that. Yeah, Pharmacy and, for Life, shout yeah. out, shout out, yeah. Uh, that was the brainchild of me and my wife and, and my wife noticing that, um, people were paying attention to what we were doing with Juices for Life. Mm -hmm. we, you know, our initial aim was to open a store in the Bronx and do good. And through the grace of God, we were able to have five juice bars now. Yeah, green supreme, uh, extra yeah, ginger yeah, for yeah, me. There you go, Come there on. you go. So <laughs> with noticing that people were catching on and willing to make a change in their lifestyle, my wife is like, we need to introduce some of the things that we take, and that's in our medicine cabinet also. So mm -hmm. it's like we're stepping with our community. So black seed oil, 
sea moss, oil of oregano, soursop, elderberry, zinc, um, vitamin B, C, D, different forms of, not magical mushrooms, but mushrooms for mm. for the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, horny yeah. gold weed, ashwagandha, maca root for the libido, keep mm -hmm. the pencil writing. Come on. Um, so we just got things for the gut, different sorts of roots, fennel root, ginger root, um, peppermint mm -hmm. for the gut. So just trying to work on preventative measures because poor people and people of color usually are scared to go to the hospital yep. or don't have insurance money. So the best thing to do with understanding that is to practice preventative measures. Right. Um, just kind of work on a lifestyle of balance to the best of your ability. Yeah. And um, keep it pushing like that. Yeah, and it's important. We need to hear that, especially black men too. Yeah, definitely. And in the space that we're in with music, hip hop, and the audience that's listening, I feel like they also yeah. need to hear it. Living in a food desert, you need to know what your options are. For sure. And what would you say for someone who does live in a food desert? Um, where could, what are the best things to order in the places where you pretty you, much? I, for everybody who lives in a, in a food desert, I say one, it's about switching your mind and the programming of what's there for you. Okay. So when, you know, poor black neighborhoods, poor black neighborhoods, mm -hmm. used to seeing a liquor store, fast food, liquor right. store, fast food, area in the corner, and you start immediately thinking of your options of what you see. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start practicing going to the supermarket for lunch also, mm -hmm. or the supermarket for dinner also, and not just to cook mm. food. Like, if you're on the road, you're coming here, say you're going to work and you're in a rush and you're not sure what to do, you could simply stop at the supermarket, grab a couple avocados, right. um, you know, cashews, almonds, peanuts, mm. whatever you like, uh, dates, bananas, mm. water, of course, mm. just things water, you're not used so to important. implementing in your diet and implement that and just, uh, really worry about the inside of your body as much as you worry about the outside because you know we like to be able to look good and um feel good you know where you know where everything's from you know where your gear is from you know where your watch is from you know where all of that's from you take as much showers as you possibly can right in a day <laughs> but you have to treat the inside as well as you're treating the outside and yeah. i think that once we practice that and at least put that into our philosophy mm -hmm. It helps you work on a life of balance because I'm, I'm not telling anybody to go out there and be a, a workout fanatic. Right. I'm not telling, telling anybody to go be plant-based. What I'm saying is just monitor what you're putting in your body, mm -hmm. monitor how it makes you feel, and then monitor on working on the balance and doing the information, like getting the knowledge on the things that you are putting in your body. Like, you're absolutely worth it. Yeah, like, we you know, are. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you feel getting ready for this tour now? Because you all good on the inside. Yeah, I feel great. I, I feel great. That's what the uh, getting up, working out, eating clean. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm prepared for life's journey of as, course. as it's going to go. So what I, I am going to do is I, I'm going to rearrange some of my tour dates because I really now want to focus on finishing this album. And, uh, the last solo album. Last solo album. I'm also uh, working on a going to work on a collaboration with Black Thought. I saw that. Yeah, so, so hold on, that's going to be with the locks because you did say that after this solo album, no more. Yeah, solo. I'm either doing collabs or locks. That's, okay. You know, so Black Thought and myself will be the collab, working on locks music mm -hmm. and the last solo. So uh, I have a packed schedule, so to say. Okay. And we're yeah. ready for it. Yeah, me too. Now, I saw that you were with Black Thought. He was also here on the show. Yeah. And his book, Upcycled Self, yeah. is coming out, probably out by the time this comes out. Definitely. When is your memoir coming out? Because you got a lot <laughs> of life to tell. Uh, people people ask me that. Uh, I'm not sure. Pretty okay. pretty soon. But that's, that's part of the uh, reason why I want to retire as a soloist, to have more room to... Uh, Right. To write, you know, uh, I, you put should a do that for your I put a fiction novel out before Invincible, so yes. I want to get back to that. This close to wrapping up a documentary on um, Yonkers, which is going to be a pretty amazing documentary. Mm -hmm. So I do want to get back into uh, books and film heavy. So I'm making 
room for it. Okay. You know? I think you should save the memoir for your 50th. We're celebrating yeah. the 49th. Yeah. I'm a little crazy, so I'm like, I don't know if, you know, my memoir is going to be like a... a it's going to be a lot. That's be how a, I need it. It's going to be a ride. <laughs> it, it, it'll be a ride, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I'm definitely going to put one together someday. And then plus my wife, uh, with her being, she's written two books. Mm-hmm. And so I'm the fake author in the house because I've only written one. Okay. So I got to uh, You got to up it. I got to up it. Yeah, so for sure I, you I'll do. I'll get there. Yeah. I'll get there. Now, respect my legacy. Yeah. What would you say about your own legacy that you've created and everything that you've done in this space when it comes to hip hop, entrepreneurialism, uh, health, everything that you've done? Uh, for me, I, you know, at this point in my life, health is the main the the main one and my legacy will be of uh, being a messenger who cared about my people mm. that's my you know uh that's what i look forward to the most really because uh the accolades you get in hip-hop uh, definitely go to my group and myself and they're things to very much be proud of uh being smart enough to do multiple businesses right it's something to be proud of but uh being a messenger to your people and you know there's been great many people I, I didn't invent fruits and vegetables I didn't right, invent right. herbs and oils I'm not right. you know we've had Dick Gregor we have Dr. Zebby we've mm-hmm. had many people who do the same thing I do and still mm-hmm. and, and still so I'm proud to just be on board and be it as a messenger that's effectful effective in hip hop like mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's a it's a blessing to say I've been able to help people in their lives at least feel somewhat better. So right. that's that'll be my legacy to go down in history as a messenger of health. Yeah. Would you say that's your purpose as well? Definitely. Mm-hmm. I think you have to you have to find something that you're here for. You know, uh, when you go, when I go, mm-hmm. I, I I heard a saying um, before, and I, th- I guess it always stuck stuck with me. Right. When you when you when you go, you're not gonna think about the things you did. You're gonna think about the things you didn't do. Mm. So I want to be the type of man who uh, made sure I help my people. I don't want to get there laying on my deathbed and be like, damn, I, I wasn't beneficial this. to anyone else. Like if I could leave the earth beneficial to someone else, that's that's a blessing in itself. Absolutely, and you're doing just that. Yeah. Walking in your purpose, of course you know that. Yeah. Now, I love how vocal you are about the things that are happening on your daily, on the gram, oh, yeah. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I tap in just to see what's going on. Yeah. We're not doing the bell bottoms. No, nah, I don't knock nobody <laughs> We're not doing all of the new fashions. Nah. We keeping it real simple. Yeah, I keep it real, I keep it real simple. And I don't knock like, <laughs> other people like, I don't have the structured body for. Mm. You uh, know yourself. A, a, you know your yeah, style. Like, yeah, and I, you know, my, <laughs> my attitude and uh, personality and body type don't reflect wearing what everybody else is wearing. Right. Plus, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like an uncle. Like, you know what I mean? I'm the cool uncle. Like, right. So I think when you, you get the cool uncle or OG status, <laughs> yeah, you can't be jumping in a young boy's and trying all the new things and a lot it looks good on you know it looks good on like i guess tall slim dudes or Mm. certain size dudes is just flare jeans won't work on me right right right. sweats or uh, simple cargo got you if you guys are confused you got to go to styles p instagram because every day he's updating us on what's going on yeah i mean you go to the store though it's hard to like i went to neiman and Shaq's the other day was all flare jeans. Mm-hmm. That's the like, style right now. Yeah, it was like every jean in there. <laughs> was, then they pulled out a sweatsuit. I was like, oh, I like that sweatsuit. It's cool. Mm. It was a flare sweatsuit. I was yeah. like, come on, y'all. <laughs> like, I'm too short to be walking around with. They uh, taking us back to the yeah, 70s. I can't do it. Like, oh, I, my God. I, I missed that era. Has anyone ever approached you about a podcast or yeah. doing more media-based things because yeah. of your opinions? Yeah, like, I, sometimes I get in trouble for my opinion. Sometimes mm-hmm. it makes people laugh. Well, I wouldn't say trouble. Sometimes my opinions... I'm a sad, so I just say oh, what yeah. I say. Like, I'm I'm like, just... Y'all are a lot. I'm, a, <laughs> yeah, I'm like... <laughs> some say I'm brutally honest, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Uh, I, I'm kind of in my own world, like, you know what I mean? So sometimes when I say things, it... Uh, rubs people the right way. Sometimes it rubs people the wrong way, but I always tell them you don't got to follow me. Right. Oh, not life. look or not 
pay attention to what I'm saying, but uh, would you ever go that route with having the microphone in your face and you know commenting on? Yeah, I don't mind. I, yeah. I like I like uh, I love speaking my mind. Mm-hmm. I love speaking my mind, and then well, sometimes I I'm gonna say things that are gonna really bother people. Or uh, that's gonna either make them think right in a in a in a certain way. And uh, here's the thing: when you're right, mm-hmm. and people don't see you're right yet, mm-hmm. they criticize the crap out of you. Mm-hmm. Then when they find out you're right, they don't come back and apologize. Nope. So it's good, like you know what I mean. Uh-huh. I would like a couple of apologies <laughs> for, some, for some people when I was right. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But it's it's all good. I think the podcast should definitely come next too. Once yeah. you get all those other things out the way, because I know yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. But we definitely want to hear more of your opinions. No we doubt. can't wait for the album. We can't Thank wait you. for the book. Thank you. And of course, the tour. Yeah. And your birthday that's yeah. coming up. Yeah, I'm going to have a good time. Yes, you are. I'm gonna have a good and we're time. all going to be here to enjoy it with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. BET Talks. Y'all see it. The King.